Thank you, Professor Francisco. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And good morning, good afternoon to everyone. So I'm going to present the my project entitled Using a Nutrient Model Couple to the KDV Equation to Study Influence on Surface Waves on the Phosphate Concentrations in the Ocean. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So let's just start. This is my present presentation summary. I will start talking about the topic relevance and then introducing the advection diffusion equation and talk about the biogeochemistry involved. Here I take the one nutrient model. And then I'm going to introduce the problem one that is to obtain the submarine velocity field. And what were the simplifier hypothesis that I did for the free surface wave dynamics? And then obtain the approximation of the submarine velocity field, the KDV equation with an underlying shield current. And then I will introduce the problem two, that is my ongoing work, that is solving the advection diffusion equation. What were my first steps to solve the advection diffusion equation? And the final remarks. So beginning talking about phytoplankton and phosphate, we know phytoplankton plays an important role in animal life, especially because of the photosynthesis. And the one nutrient is very important to them is phosphate. So here I'm analyzing the phosphate dynamics. And phosphate dynamics depends on the biogeochemistry and superior velocity field. So firstly, I will talk about the biogeochemistry, the model that I've that I chose, and then the submarine velocity field after, use the KDV equation. So this is the main equation for my problem, the advection diffusion equation that models the nutrient concentration. Here, Ca represents the phosphate. So you can see that this equation depends on the right hand of the submarine velocity field, uh, here written as U depends on diffusion represented by this matrix D here and the source minus sinks of the nutrient CA that uh, includes the biogeochemistry and the nutrient remineralization here. So let's see better this term, the source minus sinks. Here I take one of the simplest models, the eddy model, and because it's one nutrient only, and the equations for source minus sinks is splitted in two in two parts. The first part with lower F, uh, we have the biogeochemistry involved here, uh, the amount of phytoplankton, the light of availability, the nutrient availability multiplied by a half side function. Here we have a function that depends on the concentration. And as we see early, we have the upper F representing the nutrient remineralization proposed by Martin in 1987. So, the source minus sinks in the simplest model consists of these two equations. Source minus sinks is by in just in just in these two terms. And then we can write the advection diffusion equation in this way. And now let's us investigate about this letter U, the velocity field, and what was my approach to obtain this velocity field and what it depends on. So I made some assumptions for the water behavior. First, I'm consider that water is in vist and compressible fluid. Uh, consider that the flow is bidimensional, as you can see here, that the, we can consider the uh, analyzing the propagation of the wave. Consider that the water wavelength is bigger than the ocean depth, and also the ocean depth is bigger than wave amplitude. This is my hypothesis. And finally, that the free surface wave here, uh, example, uh, exemplified by this image, this free surface wave is under the effects of an underlying shear current. As you can see in this example, we see a current that decreases linearly with that, uh, and it is stronger next to the surface because of the wind. So this is my assumptions for the free surface wave. And then, under these assumptions, we have this equation, no S by the KDV equation, uh, Quartveg-De Vries equation. So we have a 
a PDE here, and solving this PDE, we will obtain a free surface wave profile denoted by zeta zero here. We have some constants in this equation given by integrals, uh, and what do we need to what we need to do in order to solve this equation is uh, using some input data. The first uh, data, this is the current profile, and then the wave amplitude. And here in the KDV equation, we seek for periodic solutions motivated by that image that I showed in the previous image in the previous slide. So we have uh, solutions in this, in this shape. Uh, the zeta zero will be a function that depends on the amplitude, special functions known as Jacobi elliptical scene, the wave number, the wave speed, and this wave speed, wave number depends on the constants given by integrals. So once this is all made, we can finally obtain the Velas field. And here we have packages in MATLAB to solve it. Uh, we can obtain an approximation for the horizontal velocity and approximation for the vertical velocity. We can see that it depends on the current and depends on the free service wave profile here and some constants. Uh, here, the constant is given by letter C. Okay, so uh, the velocity field depends strongly on the free service wave profile under the assumptions that I made. And now I'm going to talk about the second part of my work, that is uh, an ongoing work, and I uh, yet study it. It's solving the advection diffusion equation. The first step I take uh, was to consider source minus sink zero to solve this equation and to turn it to a simple, simpler uh, model. I take the one-dimensional case. And I studied three methods to, in this, to solve this advection diffusion equation that I will present uh, in the next slide. And I will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these three methods to solve the equation. Uh, these three methods was based on the finite difference scheme, uh, explicitly finite difference scheme. So I took the upwind, FTCS, the four time saturated space, and the Lax, Lax Fredericks method. Uh, they showed advantages and disadvantages. Upwind, for instance, uh, is useful when the velocity does not change directions in pure, in pure adaptive problems. But the disadvantage is that this method is unable to capture solutions that travel to both directions. And we have some contests that the waves per Gates to the right, to the left, only uh, seeing the, the one dimensional case. So I needed to, ch to choose another method. And then I tried FTCS for time centered space. This method captures solutions that travel both ways, but was a condition stable for purely advective problems and requires a tiny step of time. So we have a problem of stability here. And then to solve this stability, uh, I studied the Lax Fredericks method that also captures solutions that travel both ways to the right and to the left in the one dimensional case. And the stability was higher, more stable than the previous models. But it has great numerical diffusions and requires a tiny step of time. These were the three methods that I used based on the explicit finite diverse difference scheme. But they have not shown good accuracy and stability in the, in the toy problems that I worked on. So my next steps, uh, it will be study implicit methods and possibly finite elements. I will try to analyze methods here, implicit ones, and then uh, maybe finite elements to solve that advection diffusion equation. And after finding an efficient methods with this, uh, simplifier hypothesis. I introduced the biogeochemistry again that I consider zero, source minus sink zero uh, before. And then after that, I couple the velocity field in the advection diffusion equation. I solved the original problem, the problem uh, presented here, okay? So these are my references. And I thank you 
caps for the financial support of doing this work for, for my master's. I thank Professor Francisco to the opportunity to so be here and to study the subject. My advice to Professor Roberto and every, every you, and I thank you all you that are, that is listening to me now. Thank you.